Because little children have a mind to learn. They want to know. Right. When you teach them, they don't have excuses. He is 10 years old. He's going to become a man in this community. Right. What are we going to do? We're going to teach him. So the guy here earlier, right? We was, yeah. we was explaining to him the true image of God, how he's not white, he's black. And we yeah. was dealing with him on that. But he said he disagrees with something because he feels like it's very difficult for him to believe in God when he looks at the condition of our day-to-day -day life and he asks himself, where is he? Why is he allowing this to happen to me? Right. Why is he allowing that to happen to my brother down the street? How can we be getting shot down every day? That's the question that he asked, and it's a legitimate question. Right. So you want to know the truth? Yeah, what you think? Because it's how you raised. If you got to look at your background, if your parents raised you in the church, then you will see what's going on. But see, lack of knowledge of being in the church, you will not know. Okay. So, 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 so let, me deal, let me deal with that then. So you said the mindset of being raised in the church would allow you to see the problem of our communities. I'm saying, like, if you know you're going through something like uh huh. You, I'm saying like, if, like me. Right. I'm, I'm gonna use myself. Go ahead. I was raised in the church. All right. So every day ain't gonna be sunshine. Right. So therefore, if you go through problems in life, it says you start from a mustard seed with faith. Every, you got. I'm saying it's, it's, it, you gotta, you gotta, so, you gotta deal with the battles in life. Let me ask you this question, right? Are we blessed or cursed as a people? Because. Fred Hammond said, we're what? We're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field, we're blessed when we come and when we go, right? That's what he said, right? You, you, you raised in the church, blessed, you know it. Blessed. That, that's the yeah, number one blessed. song they sing on Sunday. We're blessed, but you can curse your own self and have the curse put upon your own self. Yes, but watch this. Are we blessed? Do you think that? Do you really believe that? Because Fred Hammond will have you up in church no, singing no, no. it. No, I ain't going to say we all blessed. Okay. Because when you blessed... You ain't got no bros, you ain't got to worry about nothing. All right, but do we got to, we're the ones that got to worry about we the most. When I go, when I go to, to, to work and I'm driving and let's say the cop could pull up behind me with the lights on, mm -hmm. what, am, I, am I worried at that point? Yeah, you you better believe I'm worried. Right. I'm yeah. over here wondering like, oh shoot, all right, let me, my license and registration is over there. Let me make sure I don't make any sudden movements. You understand? Because we've seen a repetitive pattern of us getting shot down by the cops. You understand? Right. We also have seen if I go to the store, let's say, what, what time does the store open? Oh, late night, whatever? No, right here. Yeah. 8.30. 8 30. But when it gets dark in the wintertime and it's still open, do you look around when you're walking across to the store? You, 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 you yeah. Down here you better. Down here you better. That's, you worried about that. You know what I'm saying? That's not a blessed life. Right. You no. see what I'm saying? We ain't no. about that life. And I feel what you were saying. That's why I say what you said. Understood. Mm -hmm. So watch this, though. When you said, if we, if we, if, for people that are, so-called growing up in church, they should be able to kind of understand that it's going to come with, you know, good days and bad days. Yes. But watch this, though. As a people, we, have ne we haven't seen those good days because we don't understand who we are. But there's a reason for that. Watch this real quick. Give me Isaiah 59, verse 1. For, so I'm, I'm going to use what the brother said earlier, and I'm going, to try to, I'm going to try to deal with something. Because when we look around, the question he asked was, where is he? Where is God? People that have sense in their minds should be thinking, well, you know what? I do say I'm blessed. I do go to church. However, mm, my bill's still tight. Right. Mm, why, every time I turn on the news, it's, it's, it's people yeah. that the same color as me are the ones that's getting shot down. How right. come there's a new prison being built, and it's mostly us in them? Bring it up. And they build them every day, too. Every time I go get to, to get checked at the doctor, it's always something else. Bring what, doc? What's wrong with me now? They're trying to kill me. Watch this, though. Ain't God the almighty God? Didn't he create the heaven and the earth, the elements, the water, the wind, the fire, all the stuff that we can't physically do? So why can't he help me? Bring it out. That's the question. He wasn't the only one that asked that question. We talk to our people every day that ask that question. Right. That's the question that always goes through our mind. Right, but watch this, watch this. But in a result of that question not being answered, what are some of the things that happen to us? What do we run off to to try to find that solution? Before I read this. Sis, you understand what we read earlier, right? 
All right, read. Watch this. What's your, what, what are some of the things that our people run to when they try to answer that question? Well, where is God? How come he's not helping me? What do we resort to as a solution for us? Where is our solution? What are some things that you've seen in your history, in your life? Okay, so watch this. I'm gonna deal with that, and then I'm gonna show you the reason why I asked that question earlier, right? It's, it's something. It's something very specific about that. We do pray to our Most High God, right? We pray but to the some Creator. Don't know how to pray to him that's to pray. that's facts. That's facts. A lot of people don't know how to pray. A lot of people don't even know who to pray to. They think they're praying to the God, but they, this this is the image that comes in their mind. That's the one. That's the one they said about you a long time ago. Yeah. That's, a, that's his idols. That's idols, right? So watch this, read. The book of John, chapter 9 and verse 31. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. So I'm going to show you this. Watch this. This is how it goes in the heavens. You got people on this earth, and they send up a prayer to God. If their lifestyle is living in sin, the prayer does this. And goes right back down. The most high he ain't even he ain't even gonna deal with you. But then you got the other group of people that says, but he that doeth what? But if any man be a worshiper of God and do his will and do his will. Read on. Him he hear it. Hey, what's going on, bro? What's your name, real quick? Uh Robert Kerr. Robert. All right, Mr. Robert. We talking with our sis right here. So the main question that's going on right now is first of all, where is God? whenever bad things happen to us, right? Where is he? How come he's not helping us? That's question one. And then question two is, does he hear my prayer? You understand? understand. I'm gonna read the scripture again and I'm gonna explain. The book of John, chapter nine and verse 31. Now we know that God heareth not sinner. So God says, if there's somebody that's down there living in a sinful lifestyle, whenever they pray up to me, their prayers is gonna come up and then stop and I'm going to send him right back. He's like, I don't even want to hear that. You know, if somebody call your phone and you don't really want to talk to him, what you do? No yeah, I, I reject. Or I just let it ring. I don't hear it. I don't know what's going on over there. My phone ring. Who is that? A, a bill uh, I don't want to deal with him right now. But you know, a you see what I'm saying? A prayer's not going to get through because in order to pray and, and get your prayer through, we was born a sinner. But, Jesus wasn't. So you got to go through Jesus. No, but watch to this. Or, but watch this, though. Watch this. Watch this. In order to send a prayer to Christ, right, Jesus Christ, you have to do something first. That's right. Before you even send it to Him, you want you want Christ. Hold on, you want Christ to go to the Most High God on your behalf. Bring it up. If the Most High God has a requirement for us first, Bring it up. you got to understand the equation. That's the formula. In order for me, let's say if I, you got any kids. Yeah, my kids are old. Kids, okay, well, son or daughter? Two daughters. Two daughters. All right, so when your daughters was younger, right, when you was raising up in, in the house, if your daughters wanted to, let's say, go out somewhere, and they asked mom, hey, mom, can we go to, to the game tonight, right? If you had a rule that they should have been following all week for them to go to the game, and they don't uphold their part of the deal, are they going to the game? Thank you. That's the same guy we serve, my brother, my sister. So watch this. Hold on. Here's how you get the prayers answered. All right, read this. But... If any man be a worshiper of God. Now it says, but the flip side, if any man be a worshiper of God and do what? And do his will. What is the will of God? Bring it up. Hold, hold that and go to the will. What's the will of God? Trust and believe. Trust and believe. What you say? Do his commandments. To do his commandments. Okay. So we got two different answers, right? We're going to put y'all on the same page. That's what y'all going to learn today. Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 40 and verse 8. Bring it out. I delight to do thy will. So David said, I delight to do God's will. I'm a, I'm a, I want to do the will. Read. Oh my God. Uh -huh. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Thy what? Thy law. Thy what? Thy law uh -huh. is within my heart. In order for me to do 
thy will, I am going to apply thy law. So the will of God is what? What is the will of God? What's the God? Come here. What's, what's the will of God? Come here. Cut me off guard, then. Cut me off guard. Ah, I do it again. I do it again. I do it again. I do it again. Watch this. Watch this. Read. I delight to do thy will, oh my God. Uh huh. Yea, thy law is within my heart. So the will of God is what? To do thy will. Which is what? Thy law is within my heart. Right. So the will of God is thy law. Right. So whenever you read about the will of God in the Bible, you're reading about the laws of God. That's, That's right. how you connect the dots. That's the proper way of reading the Bible. Right, so watch this. Now we're gonna go back. Now, how do we get our prayers successfully sent up to God without them being rejected? Read. But if any man be a worshiper of God and do his will, so now, I have to do something. I have to do the will of God, which is what? The law. There you go. I know you had it. I'll put you on the spot again. It's all good. Now, in order for me to do God's laws, we don't finish that verse. Him, he hear it. Then he's going to hear my prayers. You understand? That's why a lot of people ask that first question, where is God? I pray to him day and night. I go to church every Sunday. I cry at the altar. I give my money. I go on Wednesday night. I go on Saturday morning. You see what I'm saying? I grew up in church. That's how I know. I see them all the time. And they be genuine too. We're not just going to sit there and point and say, nah, everybody in church is evil. Some of our people, they really want to know what God is. But they, that's the only source that they have. But a lot of people say, you know, you know, you know. It's, it's never supposed to cause for the word of God. The, the so-called modern day pastors have been, have been taught that the business that involves teaching the gospel should be a transactional value. But that's not, what we, that's not gonna get us to the kingdom. You understand? That's not gonna get us to the kingdom. So in order, we gonna deal with that. In order for our prayers to be answered, we have to do God's laws, right? That's the most important ingredient in every situation in life. How do I apply God's laws? In order for me to do that, now I have to start learning about the laws. And then it's gonna be all at once. It'll be one at a, you know, one day at a time you take it. One day at a time. I'll come right back and go back right here. Better go back in the shade. I'll come right back. You want some water? We got water and Gatorade over here. Ain't nothing over there. I got my beer over there. You got your beer? I got the beer real. I'm coming right back. I ain't going nowhere. Come on back. Come on back. Come on back. Come on back. So I'm asking this question. Yeah, yeah. It's more commandments and laws than just ten, but the ten is it's like a it's like all of them secluded concluded into one. It's like they have they have sub laws under that. For example, uh, rape is that evil or wrong? Is that good or wrong? What? Rape. Rape is wrong, right? Yeah. Rape. What you think? Rape is wrong, right? Now, where in the ten commandments do you see thou shalt not rape? It ain't in there. It ain't in there. It ain't in there. So, where do I find it? It's a sin, right? I mean, somebody, it's a sin somewhere. You got that? Uh, what is that? 20, Deuteronomy 22 and 25. Watch this. We're going to read about it. Oh, he's going to bring my stuff. He's going to bring it. All praise. All praise. You got it? Yes. All right, read this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 25. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field, and a man force her. So if a man sees a woman, and he rapes her, read, and lie with her. Uh huh. He forced her to lie with her. That's rape, right? I, I ain't gotta back out. But it's the reason why, but you say it makes sense because you got a lot of there's a sex offenders right down here. Right. Yeah, here. there's a lot of sex offenders around here. So that's a law that we don't have as a community. We don't apply that law. Right. But watch this. This is how we fix it. This is what this is what it is. The read. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field, and the man force her. Uh -huh and lie with her, so he rapes her we. then the man only that lay with her shall die. Because that's a, that's a judgment that's worthy of death. That's right. murder. Read on. Read on. Keep reading. But unto the damsel thou shalt do nothing. Right. There is in the damsel no sin worthy of death. Because it wasn't her fault, right? Read on. For as when, for as when 
a man rising against his neighbor uh -huh. and uh -huh. slaying him. So that's just the same, this is saying that act that that man is doing to that sister, right? Raping her. God is saying that is the same thing as, for as when a man rising, rising against his neighbor and slay him, even so is this matter. So when a man rises against his neighbor and slay him, what is that called in our community? Yeah. All right, it says if a man rise against his neighbor and slay him, what is that called today in our communities? If you got upset at your brother right here and decided to take his life, what is that called? It's called murder. 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 murder is heavy enough in our block. That's right. You understand? understand? God forbid there might be somebody that lose their life today, right. tonight. Who knows? You got the main fence going on. Next few seconds. Next few right? seconds. Think There's no it. telling. People be so, you think people are your friend. They right. Do, do they're, they're like listen, Everybody listen. Your Everybody's your partner. <laughs> I know, listen, I know somebody that was married to someone and murdered her, his wife with the kids in the house. And I grew up with that dude. I know people like that. So that spirit is heavy in our people. Bring it up. So God is saying that same thing is just as bad as rape. So in the 10 commandments where it says thou shalt not kill, right? Who understands that law? Y'all know that one? Oh, yeah. Thou shalt not kill. Yeah. It also means thou shalt not rape. Right. That's the same thing. You understand? So the point is, the laws of God is what's going to fix us as a community. Right. That's what's going to help us. So we have to. Yeah. Right. right. Because let's say if I wanted to print it on a sign, right? I'm going to I'm going to make an, uh, a conclusion or something. I'm trying to think of another word, but those 10 commandments will go into more commandments like covet. You understand? That's me lusting after somebody. Like, let's say I'm married to, to my wife. But then I, I want to go talk to another sister over there. That's covetousness. When the Bible says, thou shalt not covet. You understand? I am now committing a sin in order for me to feed that, the desire that's in me. That's covetous. People covet all things. People covet food. They eat too much until they can't handle themselves. And now they're sick. Some people, they covet, um, like the, the so-called white man, they coveted our land when they came over here and took it from the Native Americans. They, they, they raped and robbed our children, our wives, our mothers. Look, and I'm going to stay there right here and I'm going to walk out, right? Nah, you don't got to walk out with each other. No, I got to. You got to go? go? Like I said, cook. You in the process of cooking? Hey, look, I got to deal with that too real quick before you leave. But I'm going to get you a question. You understand? Know I, I want to deal with them. You, you get ready to ride off. I got to deal with you on something. You say you're in the process of cooking. That's a law that we're not supposed to be doing on Saturday. Bring it out. You ain't know that. I'm not blaming you and saying you're wrong, you're evil. But I got to show you that. Brother over here, he just bought all that food from the store. Listen, you got to eat. No, listen, look, we didn't say you can't eat on a Sabbath, but you can't cook. You got to prepare your food a day ahead or eat other things like sandwich, uh, salad, cereal. Man, come on. There's many things we ate growing up because we couldn't cook. I'm not going to walk into my parents' kitchen and start turning the stove on. I'm going to figure it out, though. I'm going to go into the pantry. I got peanut butter, jelly, bread, cookies. You telling me we starved as kids? I'm going to go out there and get me some more concrete blocks and some wine. And I'm going to do my cooking in the Bruh, yard. Bruh, you can't cook on the Sabbath. I'm going to read it. I'm going to show you to you. Why? Read. The book of Exodus, chapter 35 and verse 3. Bring it up. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitation upon the Sabbath day. Because the Sabbath day is a holy day that God gave to us. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, this is our greatest day of the week. That's right. We don't know that because we lost our heritage. I get it. We don't really understand. That's why the commandment number number five, number four, it said, remember the Sabbath day. So listen, but let's listen, listen, listen. Cause because I didn't finish my, my point earlier, right? When we said, Where is God? Where is he? Isaiah 59. Where is God? How come I can't pray to him and fix what's going on when I when I know that he created everything? He's he's powerful. Read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 59 and verse 1. Bring what you see? What you see? You said, oh, what was that? Oh, what's right here? This, this, this idol. He used his son. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Pope Alexander the Sixth. Pope Alexander the Sixth. 
He, yeah, Caesar Bonjour. He uses him as the image, the false image. In fact, it's called whitewashing iconoclasm. Oh, yeah, that's fake. Why is that important? Because with that image, I can also push a fake understanding, a false doctrine. All right? So finish that, uh, uh, Isaiah. Behold, the Lord's hand is not short. So listen, sis. Sis. You're in All right, so it says, read it again. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened. It says the Lord's hand is not too short. He created the earth. You think he can't come down here and fix our situation? You really think that? Some people think that. The most high hand ain't too short. He can cause the earth to open up and kill thousands of people at once. He can't fix my little situation. He can, but read on. The Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Right, it ain't too short that it can't save and fix us. But read. Neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. Neither is his ear shut to where he can't hear our prayers. But there's a reason why our prayers don't get answered. There's a reason why we feel like, where is God whenever I go through hard times? Hey, what's going on, little man? I'm, I'm going to ask you a question. What's your name, by the way? Trevion. How old are you, man? About 10. All right. I want you to look at these signs real quick. Sis, I want you to pay attention to this. Hey, you too, bro. What's going on, bro? The hat on. The blue shirt. You good? We're good. We're about Leonardo Bridge school. Right. So watch this. Who is Jesus Christ based off of these signs? Which one is it? I don't, I, I don't know. I, see, see, right. that's what, Sis. That's what he and that's a problem. And I'm saying, saying that's true. There's something wrong with you. There's a problem in our community that our children coming up. They still think that that's Jesus. Bring it up. They think that's Jesus. I thought that what I was doing. Who taught you that, bro? Who taught you that? Where you learn that from? The teacher in school? So our teachers in school are teaching our, kill, our children that this is Jesus. Wait a minute. Now, I thought I went to school to learn academics. Why am I worried now that my son is going to go to school and learn about religion? That's not supposed to happen. You see what I'm saying? There's a there's a mission. There's a, there's a mission that they have against us to teach us the wrong thing. If they're putting that in the school, that means they're trying to teach our children the wrong thing. Now, right. Trey, I'm Trey, right? For short. Right. Watch this, sis. Trey. I'm gonna read in the Bible how Jesus Christ really looked like. Watch this. The book of Revelation, chapter one and verse one. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So now I'm about to show you how Jesus Christ looks like. Verse 14. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. I want you to do this to your head. Do this to your head. What does that feel like? That feels like wool, right? Hold on, sis. Hold on, sis. Hold on. Watch. Do this to your head. That's wool. That's wool. You understand? That's pure wool. Your hair can grow up against gravity. You understand that? Bring it out. Our hair has a, a different kind of texture. Christ, Jesus Christ had that same hair texture, right? When you look at this sign, does his hair feel like your hair? His hair, yeah. No, no, no. When you see a, a no, so-called no, white man, no. right, because no. look, 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 look what his hair is doing. Wavy going down. Their hair is dead. It falls. Our hair is alive. It grows up like yours. Wool, thick, pure. Pure wool, read. His head and his hairs were white like wool, uh -huh. as white as snow. Now the color was white. Which one has white hair and thick like an afro? That one over there, not this one, right? Read on. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. So he had red in his eyes, read. And his feet uh -huh. like unto fine brass. The color of brass is brown, not white. It could be brown, dark brown, black, whatever. It ain't white. You understand? Read. As if they burn in a furnace. You take brass and you put it in the fire. What color is it going to turn, Trey? If I took brown and I burned it, what color is it? Black. 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 Simple, right? Uh, Keeping it simple. That's the color of the skin of Jesus Christ. That's right. What picture is that? Yeah. Based off what we read, Jesus Christ is black. 
Trey. Trey. You, you, it's cool. It's cool. We, we, we got you. We looking around. Ain't nobody going. Listen, Jesus Christ is black. Say it. Jesus Christ is black. Did you know that today? Did you know that before today? Did you know that before today? You didn't know that. What about you? What color is Christ? He's black. Uh, he's black. We just read it in the Bible. Now, see that? My young brother Trey right here, I asked him, you're not the 18 and 3. I just asked him was, was, what color was Christ earlier. He pointed to this picture right here. But, but, but watch it. But listen, Trey didn't know that. So I'm going to show you something, right? He pointed to this. Then I went to the Bible and read the description of Christ. And then I asked Trey to speak on the mic, loud and proud, of what he said. What did he say? He said he was black. That's Matthew 18, 3. Read. The, the book of Matthew, chapter 18 and verse 3. Uh -huh. And said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children. Why did Christ say become as little children? Because you need to learn something. Because little children still got a mind to learn. They got a brain of a, of a sponge. They want to soak it all in. My brother Trey right here came thinking Christ was white. Hold on. He said Christ was white. When Trey prayed before today, he saw this weight. Yes, he learned that in school. He got that from school. But watch this. Don't listen, listen. We're not trying to deal with the excuse. I'm going to show you a point. You understand? Trey came here. Trey is 10 years old. He learned that Christ was white in school. Then he came to the prophets of God. And out of the Bible, it said that he had skin like brass, right. woolly hair, white. So up. then I asked Trey again. I said, Trey, what color is Jesus Christ? What color is he, Trey? Black. What? Black. What? Black. Now he said he's black. That's right. So as a little child, what did Christ say? Read it again. Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted. If you don't be changed and do what? And become as little children. Because little children have a mind to learn. They want to know. Right. When you teach them, they don't have excuses. He is 10 years old. He's going to become a man in this community. Right. What are we going to do? We're going to teach them. Some are right. still 10 years old right now. That's right. Grown up and 10 in the mind. That's but they're right. locked because they don't want to learn. They got excuses. It's, look, dead and all that. Excuses got to go. Read on. Except ye be converted uh -huh. and become as little children. And become like Trey. Read. Ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Because you're going to stay locked into your sin. You you're going to be stuck in sin. Sin. What is sin? What is it? Sin is the opposite of what God wants you to do. You better believe it is. It's the opposite. So when we live in the opposite of God, are we getting the kingdom of God? No. Sin is unrighteousness. Sin is what? Unrighteousness. Okay, so watch this then, Trey. I want you to still listen to this. Watch this. Ain't nobody perfect. Listen, I know that. I know that. We're not saying you perfect right now. Christ said, be perfect. What does that mean to be something? He came here. God came in the flesh. No. God sent his son to... To die and to die for our Christ sins. I'm you Watch this. I'm going to ask you something. Hold on, hold on. I'm going I'm I'm to finish this and then I'll give you a question. I got you. You, have, you want some water? I, I offered you the I third time now. No, I just got to be. I don't know. You don't all right, all right. God in I'm going to show you that. Watch this. Whosoever, therefore, shall humble himself. You have to do what? Humble himself. You got to humble yourself. You don't got to physically bow down before us. No, no. But your mind has to be ready to be like, you know what? Exactly. The life that I thought I was living, shoot, I was wrong. I came into the knowledge of God at a grown age like this. So at one point in time, listen, I grew up in church like you this is. Tis, I grew up in church. My yeah. father's the bishop of a Christian church right now. I used to be on there in the choir, the usher, with the white gloves. I remember that. They don't do that now. They, they, they come up and take your gum out. Hey, give me that gum. Remember that? You remember the, the, the drummer boy? I was the drummer. I did all of that. I, I was God. all up in there. I learned about God and prayer. You understand? So I, I can tell you from personal experience. So I got my brother Trey right here, right? Just to bring you up to speed, before Trey came here, he thought Jesus was white. What about you? I was listening. You were listening. I, I know he's not white. Yeah, he ain't white. Hey, Trey, 
Christ in white. Open that flyer real quick to the inside. Because I want you to study that picture right there. That one right there. That's how Christ looks like. That's what the Bible talks about. So every time you pray, that's the image now. So you said, uh, when do we get our land, right? What is our land? You're right. The earth was created for us. The whole earth. I ain't talking about just a country in Africa. The whole earth was supposed to be for us. Even the elements, the stars and the moon, all that was created because we was going to live this earth one day. When God created everything, he said, all right, I'm going to put this here, day one, day two, day three, put this here, the grass and all the herbs and stuff, and then I'm going to put man on there. The first man was white or black? Trey. Black. What about you? Black. So all the stuff that was put here before, it was for us. But when did we get that back? Why are we where we at now? Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30 and verse 1. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessings and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among the nations, whether the Lord thy God hath driven thee. Uh -huh. And thou shalt return unto the Lord thy God and shall obey his voice according to all that commanded thee this day. Thou and thy children with all thine heart. So it says, and all thy what? All thy heart and with all thy soul. So after we start to learn to keep God's commandments and turn back to him with all our heart and our soul, right? What happens? That then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity. So the, cap the life we live in right now is captivity. Right. A lot of people don't understand that. That's why they think they're blessed. They think they're blessed in the city, blessed in the field, all that stuff, right? Right. We ain't really blessed. You look at our community, and not just here in Augusta, because if you, you traveled before, right? Trey, you've been to other places other than this area right here? Have you noticed that every hood or ghetto or whatever you call it, we all live the same way? We don't get the best part of the city. We get the, we get the nice grocery stores. Now, nah, we got to get the rundown IGA on the corner. You see what I'm saying? We don't get no KJs or what is it, Whole Foods. So when I want to buy groceries for my house, I got to get the hand-me-down bananas. I want the fresh ones too. I want the, the, the fresh almond milk and stuff like that. You understand? We don't get that at, at our stores. We get drug stores, liquor stores, dr gun stores, pawn shops, three churches on every street that don't teach us nothing. You see what I'm saying? Uh, but then it says, I will turn that captivity, right? I'm going to ask these and see what they say. How y'all doing, sis? Hey, Trey, don't leave yet. I'm going to ask you a question. Are we blessed or are we cursed? Blessed. You said we're blessed? What about you, sis? Oh, no. We're blessed. You said we're blessed? All right. My man here, he says opposite. So now we got to figure out why. What's going on? You all right? You got, hey, come to the front real quick. I'm going to show you something. Can I interject? No, I'm not. Put that over there. Yeah, you put it over there. Yeah, yeah. I think it reference when they say that we are blessed. We are, in a, are blessed in a certain, for waking up, being able to see another day to change, you know, uh -huh. who we are. So in a sense that we are blessed in that sense. No, nah, watch this. I'm going to show you this. Give me, give me Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 26. You made a point, right? That, that's good. That's a good point. Because some people may think, well, I'm still living. I'm still surviving. You know what I'm saying? I'm making it. Right, so I'm, I'm blessed. That's, that's crumbs compared to the land, the whole earth that belongs to us. I can't go, you see all this grass right here, grass over there, big old acres of land and stuff like that. I can't go over there and say, oh, man, ain't nobody living here. Let me, let me build something on here. Right. Now nah, I gotta go to the office, get the paperwork, get permission. If I wanted to drive a car, I gotta get a permit. I gotta ask, can I drive my car? You understand? That's not blessed. Nehemiah, read that. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 9, and verse 26. Uh -huh. Nevertheless, they were disobedient and rebelled against thee and cast thy law behind their back. So God's people, the children of Israel, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, it says we were disobedient to our God. We told God, I don't want to follow your laws. Right. Whatever you got for me, whatever you told me to do, nah, I gotta, I'm going to do something else. That's what we said to God. He's our God of the blacks and Native Americans only. You know what I'm saying? That's right. 
This is what happened though. And slew thy prophets, which testified against them to turn them to thee. And they wrought great prov provocation. Uh -huh. Therefore, thou deliveredest them into the hand of their enemy. So that's how we got to where we are now. Our people, we go to church every Sunday like that. Right there. Every Sunday, Saturday, all of that. We go to church day in and day out. But our conditions aren't fixed yet. You understand? Like you said earlier, when did we come back to our land? When did we get that back? God put us in this condition because we, dis we disobeyed him. That's a, that's a, that's a, it makes sense. Read. And in the time of their trouble, uh -huh. when they cried unto thee, thou heardest them from heaven. Uh -huh. And according to thy manifold mercies. Thy what? Thy manifold mercy. What's mercy? Mercy is when he feels sorry for you or he want to make things right with you. Right. He's looking at his people that he created who are above all the people on the earth, and he's watching them on the bottom. And he says, according to the mercy that I have for my chosen people, this is what I'm going to do. Thou gavest them Savior. Thou gavest them what? Saviors. Uh -huh. Who saved them out of the hand of their enemies. So the saviors of today are the men you're seeing right now. Yes. We are the ones that are sent by the Most High God to show his people who that we are the same. How to live right and how to get our people back. How to get our land back. How to get out of these Christian churches so we can understand the proper way to love God. That's right. They don't teach us that in the church. They don't teach us what sin is really is according to the Bible. They don't teach us not to break the Sabbath day. They don't teach us not to commit adultery. Some of them, they say it, but they don't really understand God's laws are the most important thing because they still celebrate Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, New Year's Day on the 1st of January when everything is dead. Yep. How is that the brand new year? When spring was, is when all the flowers and stuff start coming up. You see what I'm saying? So the, the moment we come back to God is when we're going to get that land back. But right now, it feels like we're blessed because there's mercy. Right. But that's a grace period. Give me Titus about grace. Watch. Because if he were to kill us all off, then that's the end of the movie. You know what I'm saying? If you... what what. What would be your, your title as a movie director? Just any name. Think of a name. Spielberg. But Stephen King. Stephen King. Yeah. Stephen King directed this film right here. Stephen King created 18 different nations of people. Stephen King said, one of these nations, I'm going to put above all the other ones. And if they follow the rules that I give them, they're going to rule the earth. They're going to have gold, land, milk, oil, corn, wine, all of that, flock, cattle, the whole earth. But if they do the opposite, I'm going to bring them all the way down to the bottom. Right. And I'm going to make the other people that I created rule over them in slavery. Like this. These slave ships happened to us. Who did it to us? White people. The white people. Edomites. Edomites. Straight, plain and simple. You already know. You understand? God did that. Matter of fact, hold that. And we're going to go to that and prove it. Deuteronomy uh, what is it? 28 verse 68. Watch this. I'm going to point out, I'm going to show you a point out of that verse. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 68. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. It says who? The Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. When you read about Egypt in the Bible, that's synonymous with what? What happened to us when we was in Egypt? We was enslaved. Bondage. Yeah, bondage. You got that? Watch this. The book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Out of slavery. In Egypt, we were slaves. We built all of that. Right. Slaves. Right. Read. I'm going to go back to Deuteronomy. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. He says, now God is going to bring his chosen people into slavery again. This is a new slavery. Not the one in Egypt anymore. Read. With Ships. With what? With ships. When you go into slavery with ships, that is not a yacht. That's right. That is not a speedboat. That's right. That's not a cruise line. You understand what kind of ship that is? If you feel me. Read on. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, uh -huh. thou shalt see it no more again. As a nation of people, we're not going to see our homeland again as a nation of people. Because we used to go there all the time back in Jerusalem. That was our land. That was the best part of the earth. We went there all the time. Feast days, living it up. 
I'm talking everything. Grill, the same thing you see now in our communities. Cooking everything, all of that. Yeah. The lamb, all, we ain't good. Wine, all of that. Strong drink. Mm -hmm. Strong drink ain't nothing new. We been had that. Okay. We was living it up. We had to celebrate. We had, we had the most holidays that you could think of. You understand? But we said we're not going we to experience that again because now we're on the bottom. We're living in the, in the ghettos. We're in the projects. And I ain't, like I said, Augusta, Georgia. I mean, that's Augusta, Georgia. Right, <laughs> Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? New York City, Chicago, LA, any city. That's we live in the same condition. Read. And there, ye, and when you get off the ships, read, ye shall be sold unto your enemy. God says, I'm going to have your enemies by you. You will be sold into your enemies. The so-called white man, the Ishmaelite man, the Arabs, all of them are going to buy our people. And we're going to teach them Islam. Right. You see what I'm saying? I'm going to teach them Christianity. I'm going to teach them Egyptology. I'm going to teach them five percenters. I'm going to teach them there is no God. And now they all jacked up. Right. They all against each other. I'm going to have this one over here sent to this land called the Bahamas. These are going to be sent to Puerto Rico, and now they're going to have hatred to each other. Matter of fact, I'm going to put some in Dominican Republic and Haiti, and they're on the same landmass, but they don't like each other at all. God did that. Read. And ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men. For slave men and bond women. Because they had our sisters, our mothers, our daughters, and slaves too. They had no care for nobody. Read. And no man shall buy you. When it says that, it means no man is going to redeem their condition. Because we're still in that same condition today. Right. Give me that in Baruch. Right. Give me uh, 3 and 8. That's what I want. 3 and verse 8. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. We're still in captivity today. Right. The churches in the Christianity ain't going to teach us that. I guarantee you. I've been to hundreds of different churches. You know, I was raised in the church. They're not going to teach us that. Because if that is taught in a church, which was set up by the so-called white man in slavery, all the different denominations, Baptist, Catholic Church, yeah, all of that. They set all that up in slavery. They, have, they still have churches today where the white man will come in and watch and see if we're teaching what they told us to teach. What is nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you.